Well, now, the public wanted tough action, the Home Secretary insisted today, as she defended the government's criticism over the way the police handled last week's riots. More than 2,800 people have now been arrested. As David Cameron said, he wanted a harder line on gang and street violence. But senior police officers said they wouldn't be slavishly adopting empty slogans. And some community leaders have warned against adopting zero-tolerance policies. Asha Tanner reports. It's a week on from the riots which started here in Tottenham and communities are still trying to come to terms with how the trouble could have escalated. The violence that was unleashed up and down the country has left open wounds, blighting many high streets. But one community leader says the Prime Minister's calls for zero tolerance is not the answer and there are many underlying problems that have to be addressed. I think the core issues are issues around social deprivation and the issues around young people being disenfranchised, disengaged with society and there's some parenting frontiers, the issues around poverty, a whole raft of issues but we've got to give these young people a voice to articulate what their core issues are. We can't allow them to be criminalised and destroy their future. Today, David Cameron used a Sunday newspaper to urge police to adopt a hardline stance on street crime. Officers continue to crack down on suspected looters and rioters. Each day, police cells and courts struggling to cope with the growing number of cases from the fallout of last week's trouble. The failure by officers to initially control the violence has today also been criticised by the Home Secretary, who's defended her decision to relay public sentiment. Our role, politicians' role, is to reflect to the police what the public expect of them. The public were angry about what happened early, over the last weekend. The public wanted a tougher response from the police and they got it. But many senior police officers believe they've been made scapegoats, saying mixed messages from the government over their tactics has not helped. When you're here, uh, as you've seen from what's going on here, if you're a gold commander or a silver commander here, uh, you're making big decisions, really big decisions, uh, that has massive impacts, and you have to have the courage to do that, uh, which is why I salute them, because they had that courage to do that on Saturday, Sunday, Monday nights. Uh, and I think afterwards, when you get then criticised for those uh, tough decisions that have been taken, that can be hurtful. One senior Tory, Ian Duncan-Smith, who is heading up the Prime Minister's task force on gangs, has promised an official campaign of harassment to make troublemakers' lives hell. As tension mounts between the police and politicians, it also appears that cracks are forming within the coalition government. The Liberal Democrat deputy leader Simon Hughes has warned that knee-jerk solutions could have the reverse effect. According to the Home Office, there have been over 2,800 arrests made across Britain. More than 1,300 people have been charged and over 1,000 people have been through the courts. David Cameron and the Home Secretary, Theresa May, have insisted the coalition is sticking to its plans to slash police budgets. But London's mayor has argued that more offices are needed on the beat. The case I make to government and I'm going to continue to make is that numbers matter. And I think that the numbers we've got on the streets of London now, they're up on when I came in, uh, but it's vital that we keep them high and that we keep public confidence. Both party leaders are expected to return to the fray tomorrow, but with local policing seen as the bedrock of peace in many communities, some senior officers believe adopting empty political slogans is simply not the best way forward.